Hey, it's Molly. Welcome back to my channel as we take a look at the Leo full moon happening on January 25th, 2024 at 12.53 p.m. That's Eastern time, so be sure and adjust for your location on the planet. We have a lot to talk about in this first full moon of 2024, so let's get to it. So in this chart, we find the sun at 5 degrees Aquarius, 14 minutes, and the moon directly opposite it at five degrees of Leo, 14 minutes. Now, what is really interesting here about this full moon is that it has a number of extremes and it initiates an interesting cycle that we're going to be experiencing into July. So what's going to be happening is that every full moon chart is going to be interacting now with Pluto. Pluto in Aquarius, we see it here at zero degrees, nine minutes of Aquarius, is going to be a prominent player in the full moon charts for the first half of 2024. Then we're going to have a lunar reset in June and July, where we have two Capricorn full moons that reset the lunar schedule. What we've been experiencing, and I've done a separate video for you on this, is we've had a full moon before the new moon, meaning we are now in Aquarius season and we're starting Aquarius season with a full moon and later in February, we will have the new moon. In a typical lunar cycle, we start with a new moon and then have a full moon. So we've had a lunar reverse energy. For the first half of 2024, these full moons are interacting with Pluto, which raises the emotional volatility, especially in the collective energy field. And you could be saying, Molly, that's not new. We've already been in that. Yes, we have been in it. It's already been very active, very strong, but it's going to continue to pick up. It's going to continue to activate more in our emotional bodies, our reactions, our responses. There's going to be more coming up around these collective energy fields that Pluto is activating that actually comes through as something we need to see. Pluto brings us into that underworld so we can have new revelations, new levels of enlightenment, and new ways of seeing things that we didn't see before that were in the subconscious or the unconscious. These full moons are going to be activating that for each of us personally and collectively. It's going to perhaps even be quite dominant. And now our universal assignment is really understanding responsibility around our emotional bodies, how we care for what we're thinking, what we're sensing, what we're picking up on, how we are responsibly managing the energy on a daily basis. There's also the potential here to evolve more of our primal functioning, more of our primal responses. And I'm seeing those connected, especially to the bottom three chakras. I'm also seeing it as connected to the emotional body and the fear body, similar to what is your process when you're highly triggered? What do you do for self-care? How do you regulate or co-regulate? How are you nurturing what you're feeling and taking responsibility for it without perhaps purging it or throwing it up in the collective? So we have some big emotional work to be aware of here especially in the first half of 2024. Now, with this full moon in Leo, which I will be talking about here in just a minute, but there is something to understand before this full moon occurs, and that's that the Sun and Pluto will be conjunct on Saturday, January 20th at 29 degrees, 59 minutes of Capricorn. They're conjunct that's at 8.46 a.m. Then the sun enters Aquarius at 9.07 a.m. So basically 20 minutes after the conjunction, the sun moves into Aquarius, followed by Pluto entering Aquarius at 7.50 p.m. Again, Eastern time. So that would be less than 12 hours after their conjunction. So they're both moving into these Aquarian energies together, the sun lighting it up. 
I've done other videos for you here on my YouTube channel about that. And what this then is really strongly and powerfully focusing on for all of us is where we have the beginning degrees of Aquarius in our chart and where we're evolving into new energies, but I'm seeing it as new dimensional frequencies right outside the aura that are incoming, that are incoming. And then we have an opposition from the moon in Leo, which is amplifying what needs to be seen. Now, the moon in Leo is strong, confident, proud, flashy, flamboyant. It's the energy of bright colors and look at me. It's the energy, too, that will connect the emotional needs to the heart and the solar plexus, providing strength for what you want and what you need, allowing you to, I'm feeling this as an alignment here, allowing you to align at a personal level your sense of strength and power with these new frequencies that are incoming. And I feel this, again, as the energies right outside the aura, right outside the solar plexus coming in and connecting, like landing at a personal level. And it feels like there's a lot of power and strength here that is connecting you to new ways of seeing your power and strength. I do feel this as a strengthening full moon, but because it is in opposition here to both Pluto and the sun, the, these are new, almost foreign energies that are incoming. And as I say that, I'm actually seeing these as incoming particles, light codes, and frequencies from other galaxies, other dimensions. And it feels, it feels really fresh. It feels actually quite weird and odd and foreign, you know, because we're meeting, you're meeting a new part of yourself for the first time. And there's something about the second half of January where these energies are really powerful and really strong, and they're showing up through multiple astrological developments. So not only is it being activated through the sun and Pluto energies here entering Aquarius together, followed by this full moon in Leo that wants you to own your talents, your gifts, wants you to own more of who you came here to be. This is really big for star seeds, energy workers, light workers. Um, I'm even seeing it as indigo adults. Um, indigo adults, you know, you're not here to be told what to do. <laughs> you came in with a sense of purpose. Um, this is for anyone who has identified as being outside the status quo, outside the mainstream. Now there's energies here supporting you and fully owning that. And this is where not only, again, is it this full moon and the energies of the Aquarian age coming through, but right after this full moon, we also are going to have Uranus station direct, January 26th, January 27th. And this Uranus is now going to be vibrating at a frequency that aligns more with both the sun and Pluto in Aquarius because Aquarius is co-ruled by Uranus and Saturn. Saturn is the traditional ruler and we're moving into a time period here of honoring the new ruler of how this Uranus energy was discovered the last time Pluto was in Aquarius. And so that discovery is a big theme here because we're discovering not only more parts of our cosmos and our galaxy, but more parts of ourselves and how they're interconnected, how they're activated, how they're coming alive. It's like it's coming online. So Pluto in Aquarius is actually taking some things offline in your life. There will be things leaving, completing, just gone. There will be friendships, networks, uh, connections, things that no longer have energy for you because this Pluto is removing them because you're coming online at a new frequency activation. It's a new frequency activation field. 
Um, okay, and I'm being guided to tell you that the reason why I do a chart like this, by the way, I know it's very analog, it's very like old school, if you will, to do a pen and paper. It's because I'm actually not looking at the chart when I do these, my eyes are closed. I'm like getting a lot of downloads, I'm seeing a lot of things, and I need to be able to focus on that and to focus on these messages. It's also why I start to talk faster because I can I channel better and receive information when I'm using things that are very basic, that are very analog. That's why I don't do this on a computer. It interferes. The computer interferes with my ability to receive these messages. So I wanted to explain that because as I'm saying all this, I'm like squinting my eyes and then I have to look back and be like, am I pointing at the right thing? So that's part of how I work. And I'm sharing that with you because there's new energies coming through that we're receiving that could feel like, am I analog? Like, am I doing this the old way? But I feel too, like with these higher frequencies, they come in faster. They come in real fast. Like these are big changes that are occurring within each of us. And I'm seeing it cellular. I'm seeing it DNA activation. I'm seeing more of our DNA open up. And in fact, if you've been feeling it in your body, almost like, oh, I have this weird twitch going on, or I keep wanting to stretch, or my body keeps wanting to do this, or move this way, or you know, stretch my shoulders, move my neck. That could be related to some new cellular activations that you're feeling and your body needs the movement. Your body needs to move. And so that's also part of what I'm feeling with this Leo full moon is that there's big activations here for each of us. And in this chart, we also have a T-square, a square with this Jupiter at six degrees Taurus and the square to the moon is overdoing it in a square you look at what's the stronger planet and in this case it's Jupiter so Jupiter is going to be dominating or really forcing or pushing something onto this moon and I feel like the Jupiter energy here is actually <laughs> it's force feeding you more of your self-worth more of your value, more of what you've come to understand about how you want to live your life, what's essential, what matters to you. And this Jupiter can be like that big giant energy right in your face and, and you can't look around it, you can't look over it, you can't look under it. It's like right there saying, own it, own it, own this. Don't play it small, don't hold back, don't diminish it. And then when you have the Jupiter squaring the sun, and Pluto here, this is a new powerful dynamic that is also coming through that you could be integrating through the square. And this feels like the Jupiter energy. The Jupiter energy is actually understanding this is more of who I am. Where does it go? Where do I put it? Because Jupiter in Taurus is practical. And it can even compartmentalize really well. But these are, these are very big energy particles that are not linear. They're, they're kind of a chaotic mess. And so you have this Jupiter being like, well, what do I do with all these new frequencies? How do I, how do I integrate it? Where do I put it? Where does it go? But think of how Jupiter is the biggest planet in our solar system. There's room here. There is room in your self-worth and your self-value for these new incoming talents, gifts, abilities, things that you're connected to. There is room for it, but that's part of what you could be feeling during this, this T-square energy and the full moon is that, but, but it's a lot. It's overload. I'm on overload. And so with the T-square, the energies also then push to the missing piece, the missing component. And in this case, it's in the fixed signs. So the missing component here is Scorpio. The energy pushes to Scorpio. And this is where it needs to dig in deeper to your soul consciousness. These new incoming frequencies that you're feeling and sensing that are being lit up, that are also overwhelming, need to go into the core of your emotional body, of, I'm seeing it too as potentially flooding 
Oh, this is interesting. Self-loathing or rage or shame. Going back to feeling like an outcast, feeling like I don't know what to do with all this. I haven't been loved. I haven't been seen or accepted for my gifts. I haven't been valued for who I am. There's something here that wants you to take the overflow into the deeper parts of your emotional body and to help flood and wash away those fears. Again, anything you haven't liked about yourself can be reprogrammed if that's your intention to direct it into the lower Scorpio energies. Now, the other component here is that this Jupiter is making a sextile to Saturn at five degrees of Pisces, 44 minutes. This is an increasing sextile where they will be exact in February at seven degrees. And this Saturn in Pisces is helping to stabilize and helping you to see the karma that's ending, the healing that you've done, is helping you to begin again. To begin again with new understandings of your spiritual growth. And then this Jupiter in Taurus. Taurus is ruled by Venus. She's over here at 2 degrees 55 minutes of Capricorn. And she's in a trine to that Jupiter and in a sextile to that Saturn. There's something you're fully owning. You're owning it on your own terms. You're owning it with a new level of responsibility, maturity, integrity, and self-respect. There's, there's a powerful new level here of this self-love that's coming through. And, and this is a feeling of it. And this is the application of it because this Venus is so supported as she's going to move forward here after the full moon and make an exact sextile to Saturn and Jupiter. She's also now traveling behind where Pluto was, as we know. She's kind of just cleaning up the scraps and understanding more the bigger picture of what she's had to learn on her own. And this, this Venus, she's, she can be stoic in Capricorn, an observer, discerning. But I think there's things she's finally seeing. It's sort of like, look at what I've completed. Look at what I've done on my own terms. This is a strengthening Venus. And it's something that you're also going to see in your physical reality. You're going to see it because of how she's connecting with Saturn, which is our forms, structures, what's man-made. And she's also getting beautiful support through the ongoing trine with Jupiter in her sign of Taurus. So there's going to be some beneficial developments here. That could certainly be money, finances, a raise, um, perhaps paying off debts with that Saturn in Pisces, perhaps getting clear on your spending and where you want to invest and where you don't want to invest, um, you know, a new sense of your financial worth, of what prosperity means to you, of what abundance means to you, and, and really feeling good about it. I also feel like this is a Venus in Capricorn that's not afraid to cut back and to say no and so those could be some of the things coming up for you with this full moon is that you're, you're just realizing, I'm not going to spend money on that anymore. I'm not going to keep buying that. I'm, in fact, maybe there's things you, know, you want to sell. You're like, I'd rather sell this and have money in the bank. So this is a powerful Venus because she is the personal planet interacting with Saturn, with Jupiter. And so this is the part of your life too, wherever you have two degrees of Capricorn, is that there is strengthened, strengthened decisions. 
and understandings of what you need for the long term and what you don't. Now, moving forward here, we have this Mercury at 14 degrees of Capricorn out of shadow territory, uh, making nearly an exact conjunction to Mars right after this full moon. And these two together in Capricorn can make things happen, can make the deal, sign the deal. Um, there's the energy here of strong communications. Mars is dominant to Mercury, so this is an this can be an aggressive, an aggressive Mars. But in Capricorn, um, he's he's just in charge. He's just in charge, and he's aware of what needs to happen and what needs to get done. And so Mercury is supporting that in what needs to be communicated, said, um, announced, what needs to be announced, uh, decided, uh, what needs to, to, to really come together. Contracts, agreements, things that are designed to have a strategy to them and work long-term. Now, both of these, however, are squaring Chiron, at 15 degrees of Aries and the North Node at 19 degrees of Aries. Now the square to Chiron is interesting because Chiron is in Aries, moving direct, and Aries is ruled by Mars. Now, as I mentioned earlier, when you have a square, you look and see, well, which planet is stronger, which is more dominant? Now, Mars and Mercury are together, right? So there's two of them. The Capricorn energy is stronger in this chart than the Aries energy. But because Chiron is direct after being retrograde, this is a cautionary energy to not re-injure. Chiron is injury. Chiron is crisis. Chiron is trauma. And so with the square here to Mars and Mercury to watch out for any kind of potential re-triggering or a new energy. And in fact, the Capricorn energy says to restrain yourself, go slow. The, the Mars with Mercury is, is dominating. And if you're going slow, if you're trusting that, if you're not trying to force something, don't force the deal if it's taking you backwards. Or look at, you know, is this triggering something that I've already healed and worked through? So be aware of that during this full moon that the Chiron in Aries could feel re-triggered. So take a step back, depersonalize it, remove some of the emotional energy and keep in mind as well that this Chiron is approaching an exact conjunction to the North Node. There's something you've been learning that's truer for you. This conjunction happens at 16 degrees of Aries, the middle of February. And so with this approaching conjunction, the energy is active. It's active. And again, it could feel trigger because of this square here from Mars. Notice that it's almost an exact square, 15 minutes, I'm sorry, 15 degrees, 52 minutes, 15 degrees, 51 minutes. Apply caution, trust to slow down, don't overspeak, don't sound off or go off or spout off. That's what the Mercury will do, especially in, in Capricorn, um, where, where there, it can come across as condescending. It can come across as the, the CEO who knows everything, but who's actually out of touch. The square to the north node is really being conscious and intentional with your actions. And that would basically be the big theme here. Your actions and your words squaring Chiron and the north node in Aries, which is about self. And this is about the big picture. And so depending on your chart, if you have stronger Capricorn in your chart, you would feel this. If you have stronger Aries in your chart, you would feel this. This is, I want to do this for me. Now, let's go. I don't want to wait for anyone. I don't need anyone. I'm ready. 
And this is slow down, think it through. What do you need in order for it to be successful, to come together and to truly work? Now, both these planets as well in Capricorn are approaching a trine here to this Uranus. And as I mentioned, Uranus is stationing direct January 26th or 27th, depending on your time zone. Stationing direct at 2.35 a.m. Eastern Time on Saturday, January 26th. And once Uranus stations direct, all planets are direct until April 1st. April 1st is when we have the next Mercury retrograde. So all planets are direct. And this, this Uranus is extra bubbly, extra alive, extra dominant. It's extra once it stations direct because it is now ruling Pluto and the sun. And then here comes Mars and Mercury making a trine to this Uranus after it stations direct. And that adds in a lot of zippy, zappy action. That is dynamic. And even though the Capricorn energies are more conservative, they're gonna feel a life force come through of change, of inspired action. So again, when we're looking at this chart, this full moon is exact, 12.53 p.m. on January 25th, and then Uranus stations direct less than 48 hours afterwards. So this is going to be a pivotal dynamic period of time, potentially volatile, very active, a lot going on, difficult at times even to know what to do, but I feel that this Leo full moons has come back to your center and your core, come back to your internal power and your creative force, come back into the fact that you're downloading new, I'm hearing directives, new directives that your soul is ready for and it's ready to land at a personal level. So this is where with the heightened energies, we could be feeling more tired, more hungry, more exhausted, more active, like you can't sleep. You don't wanna sleep. There's too much going on inside you and around you. Um, we could certainly see a lot going on with solar flares, with, with the sun being quite active with a full moon in Leo the sun being really dynamic. And also what's fascinating is how, you know, the, the sun, Leo rules the sun, the biggest light in our solar system. And it's opposing the Aquarian energies, which are connected with cold and being frozen because of Uranus, by the way because of Uranus as a planet being known for having a very cold environment and how there's different, it's interesting. It's, it's like there is an interesting integration here. What needs to be cooled off and what needs to be warmed up And that's something that comes up with the Leo full moon every year. And one more thing to share with you as we look at the astrology of the chart, let's run through the energy trail here. Because what we do is we run through the energy trail to find the final depositor. And it might surprise you what energy that is. So we go through rulerships. So Leo is in, I'm sorry, the moon is in Leo, which is ruled by the sun. The sun is in Aquarius ruled by both Saturn and Uranus. If we follow the energy trail of the sun in Aquarius, ruled by Saturn, Saturn is in Pisces. Pisces is ruled by Neptune. 
final depositor. If we follow the energy trail, the sun in Aquarius ruled by Uranus. Uranus is in Taurus. Taurus is ruled by Venus. Venus is in Capricorn. Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. Saturn in Pisces is ruled by Neptune in Pisces. Neptune in Pisces is the final depositor in this chart. Either way you slice it, whichever rulership you follow, whether you follow the Saturn rulership or the Uranus rulership, they both lead to this Neptune and Pisces, which means we're moving through a bigger process right now and we're not going to have clear answers for a few years. There's things we have to continue to wait and see. There's a lot going on behind the scenes. There's a lot going on that we don't have information about. There's new information coming up with Pluto now in Aquarius. New data, evidence, science, experiments, there's a new exper there's a new medical journal that's published information about a new virus and that virus started being tested in 2017 and it was just released in January 2024. There's things that are coming to light here that we're getting facts about and we're seeing the science we're seeing what's happening in the laboratories. Neptune and Pisces says, but you still don't know the full story. There's still a lot that we have to continually move through. So that Neptune is quite strong. That Neptune is hiding information, keeping the mystery alive, if you will. So, welcome to 2024 and to our first full moon of the year. Wherever you have five degrees of Leo is where the energy is amplified for you, where new parts of yourself are arriving. This is very creative energy. And that's what you could be feeling too, a push to create, a push to do something different, to reinvent your life, to see new parts of your identity coming to life, new parts of yourself with that sun working with Pluto still. So thank you for joining me. I'll be back with another video for you soon talking about our next new moon. In the meantime, thank you for joining me as I share with you more on my podcast every Monday and Wednesday. Oh, and those of you who have asked, it's, I have a meditation. It's a guided meditation called Channeling Your Cosmic Connections. And it's a 55-minute guided meditation to open up to more of your cosmic energies, your guides, energy sources, your council, your teams. And because you've asked, I'll put the link below the, pot, the video here as well. Wishing you a beautiful Leo full moon, and I'll see you back here soon.